All right, man, peace. So this is going to be the last segment featuring Mr. Magic Johnson, and he's going to make a series of rather interesting revelations, especially pertaining to Mr. Russell Westbrick and James Hardhead. Of course, they're going to talk about it. I'm going to chime in. Since we got the Hall of Famer, we're going to play a little pass or shoot first take style. You ready, sir? I'm ready. I'm okay. ready. I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready. I'm going to ask you a question. Shoot means you're going to answer. Pass. Okay. Defer to these two. Okay. All right. We good, everybody? Here we go. Which L.A. team is under more pressure? Would it be those Lakers or uh, the Clippers? Uh, what? I wouldn't say that either team is going to be under more pressure than the other because they both have championship expectations. But if we're going to base it on timeline or time frame, as well as contractual security, you'd have to say the Lakers because Anthony Davis is going to be a free agent after this season. Also, LeBron James basically is going to be on probation and how he treats Anthony Davis as well as many of his other teammates because he's not going to be able to engage in his normal hijinks. He's going to have to stay in line. If they don't win the championship this season, we'll see what happens with the Lakers. They might be a major shakeup. The Clippers seem to have a better overall understanding of what they expect from one another. They also seem to have a championship culture, even though they have not really won anything yet. We know their coach has won a championship and also coached in another finals. Kawhi Leonard has finals experience. So that's what they're bringing to the table. Of course, with the Lakers, LeBron James has championship level experience, but he's the only person of prominence on the squad. Of course, Rondo also has won a finals, JaBel McGee, etc. But those guys, they don't have the capability to take over games in this time period. LeBron James is going to be expected to carry the load as well as Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis has not shown himself to be a real leader. We'll see what happens. As of right now, though, I would say that the Lakers are under more pressure because there are more pressing concerns with them. I'm going to pass this one to Stephen A, okay? No looks down. <laughs> Swaggy. Look at Stephen A. He said, let me spin the ball on my finger to show people I can ball, too. Even though I sat at the end of the bench collecting splinters in my ass for a Division 17. <laughs> No, Anthony Davis is not a top five player. He's a top 10 player. And I will give him that with hesitation because once again, he's someone who puts up huge stats, huge numbers, but they're not resulting in victories. He also quit on his team last season. Braun with AD alone. This ain't football. This is basketball. Oh, all -star you got two of the five greatest players on the planet Earth. Two of the top 10. The Clippers also have two of the top 10 best players on the planet Earth right now. Not accurate, Stephen A. Elgin Baylor did not capture a championship either. In return, however, <laughs> however, this is the mic. However, look, they're going to win one, not this year. Kawhi was the best player in basketball last year, period. By the end of the finals, it was obvious that's the best player on earth. He had an historically great playoffs. He's the best defensive player. Paul George was a top five MVP pick before he got hurt. And then Try top three. He finished top three. And really, before he got hurt, Paul George was the leader in consideration for the MVP last year. He had actually surpassed Harden as well as Antetokounmpo at a certain point in the season last year. It was a very small time frame, but he was considered the front runner at, at one point, I believe like late January, before he hurt his shoulder. To the playoffs, but took the fully loaded Golden State Warriors with KD six games before they had Kawhi and Paul George. And by the way, who's coaching that team? Doc Rivers. In fact, I'm telling you right now, provided health, the Clippers will win the championship this but year. But who's under more pressure? 
the pressures. The well, Lakers, the Lakers, Lakers, Lakers are always Lakers. under more pressure. All right, pass it. Well, All right. the main thing here is this. The Clippers still got to learn how to win. Thank you. You got to learn how to win. So are the Lakers. <laughs> what makes you think the Lakers don't have to learn how to win? The Clippers are far closer to understanding how to win than the Lakers are. And the pressure is on the Lakers because every year the pressure is on the Lakers. But we know how to deal with that type of pressure. Oh. Allegedly. You knew how to deal with it. <laughs> All right. The main thing the main thing. Pass or shoot magic. Which player will have a bigger impact on his new team? Are you going Kyrie Irving with no KD this season or Russell Westbrook? Well, the I would say that Russell Westbrook is going to have a bigger impact on his team because it'll be immediate. You would expect the Houston Rockets to be somewhere in that 55 win range. They're not going to win 65 games like they won two years ago because the West is much deeper now. But Kyrie Irving, especially early, is going to struggle, I think. But who knows? We'll see what happens. In his first season with the Boston Celtics, they got off to a hell of a start, so I could be wrong. We'll find out. Pressure will be on Westbrook. Because Houston is a team that expect to probably go to the Western Conference Finals. Right, but that's not the question. The question is not who's under more pressure. The question is who's going to have the bigger impact. Trying to win a championship. But at the same time, Kyrie gets a pass because no KD. But Westbrook got to learn how to play with James Harden. I don't think those two can really coexist to me. Because Westbrook is not a stand in the corner cat. Why James Harden is up at the top of the key going one-on-one -on -one or pick and roll, Westbrook got to stand somewhere. I don't know how it's going to work, but I still say that the... It's going to work in the regular season because they're just going to have too much talent, especially from those two top guys for a lot of the teams in the NBA. But in the playoffs, they're going to have problems. The Rockets are a very weird team. They have the lowest floor and the highest ceiling of any team in the NBA. And the Lakers are better than Houston. I would agree with you, Westbrook has more pressure than Kyrie, but for a far simpler reason. Ever since KD left Oklahoma City, Westbrook ain't been out of the first round. This dude is an elite talent, arguably the greatest athletic point guard we've ever seen him and Derrick Rose. No question about okay? No question about that, and he is an elite level talent, but he is not an elite level basketball player. That's the problem. And, but since KD has left, you have not been out of the first round. Now you got James Harden. Clearly, you clearly more pressure than Kyrie Irving, who's playing with house money because he doesn't have. Right, but that's not the question. The question is not who's under more pressure. The question is who's going to have the bigger impact. So that's really more of a regular season type of, of question. Heading into the playoffs, we're going to have to reassess. As of right now, I believe that Russell Westbrook will have the bigger impact because. He's going to be playing with his entire team right now. Kyrie Irving isn't. But as I've already stated, Kyrie had a huge impact on the Boston Celtics in his first season there. So we'll see if he's grown as a person. If Kyrie has grown and matured and he understands that with great power comes great responsibility to whom much is given, much is required and decides to actually empower his teammates as opposed to strictly using his skills to try to empower himself. The Brooklyn Nets, they might shock some people this year. The answer of most pressure is actually LeBron James. But if we're, we're limiting it to... Why do these guys keep changing the goddamn question for? To West Max, or Max, Kyrie. Max, you got to answer the question. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you, Magic Johnson. Kyrie or Westbrook? Westbrook. Leave, leave LeBron Westbrook. out of this. Yeah. Westbrook is obviously protecting his Lakers. <laughs> Westbrook is under the most pressure. And it's sad, too. It's my favorite player is Westbrook. Okay. The way he goes all out because everything he has every night. But even the Rockets analytics guys now they're coming out saying, we have a 30% chance better to win given Westbrook up. Listen, you're supposed to get better. The team is already very good. And Westbrook's tendency throughout his career when he thinks the pressure's on is to pull harder, pull harder, because he wants to win so bad when sometimes he needs to learn to, right. to me to let go a little bit. Well, that happens because he has a very low basketball IQ, Max Kellerman. It'd be tough for us. Not we got to move, move it along a little that's why one of the terms, one of the nicknames for Russell Westbrook and James Hardhead for this season is going to be Dumb and Dumber. I also call them Tango and Cash. A couple of very talented bonehead cops 
who always seem to find themselves in bad situations and decide to team up. Uh, pass or shoot, no better person to ask, who is the best point guard well, heading into the season? Pass or shoot? I'm going. Well, the best point guard heading into this season, since you call him a point guard, is Steph Curry. And that's been the case for the last five years now. Pass this one to Max. I got a pass from Magic Johnson. Yeah, you did. Um, best point guard in the league? Yeah, heading into the Steph season. Steph Curry, who, by the way, was the best point guard last year. And the best point guard the year before that. Steph was doing everything Harden was doing, but his usage rate wasn't as high because KD's on the team. But Steph can do, when you use him more, he stays the same great player. And in the finals last year, for the first time in his career, when his... Damn. <laughs> he was lacing that dude up. ...needed him. He came through under pressure. I'm talking about in the finals. Where Steph sometimes in the finals, but what happened to your shot, Steph? Why are you lackadaisical with the ball? You're throwing it behind the back, out of bounds. Game seven at Oracle again. No, he had an excellent, especially a couple games when they nice. needed him most. The answer is Steph Curry. Stop lying, Max Kellerman. That was not what you were stating in the direct aftermath of the NBA Finals. You were claiming that Steph Curry came up small again. You were teaming up with Kendrick Perkins to try to land base Steph Curry. Now all of a sudden you're claiming that he had a great Finals. Steph Curry did what he's normally done in the NBA Finals outside of 2016, which is play very well. At six foot two and a half. There's only so much he's going to be able to dominate when they're double teaming him, even when he does not have the basketball. This is Steph Curry, but as usual, I have to simplify things for folks. Here's the deal. You Stop trying to dribble Stephen A. Smith. <laughs> you have the handle of a drunk quadriplegic with cerebral palsy. Just keep the ball in your damn hand. It's Steph Curry. The modern day game requires that if you're going to be a superstar caliber point guard, you have to be a perimeter threat. There is no superstar at the point guard spot in the modern era who doesn't have the ability to shoot from the perimeter. We talk about Russell Westbrook as a superstar talent, not a superstar player because- Thank you, sir. It's about time you've acknowledged that. The 30% from three point range. So you wondering how's he gonna coexist with Harden? You ain't worried about who Steph Curry's gonna coexist with because from the second he steps past the half, Court. Literally, he is a threat from beyond half court. Yeah, he's a nuclear bomb. In the three-point era, alongside of Michael Jordan, really in the last 40 years, when you talk about offensive impact, you're basically talking about Michael Jordan, Shaquille O'Neal, and Stephen Curry as the biggest nuclear bombs in modern basketball history. That's how it is with Steph Curry. That's why he's the best right People now. love playing with him, too, because ball doesn't stick. No, no question about it. Exactly. That's the point. That's why I call him a nuclear bomb. Because not only is the productivity there, but also the proficiency level is so high. For those people who might be saying, what about Kobe? What about this guy? What about that guy? No, we're talking about the most impactful players of the last 40 years offensively. Nuclear bomb level impactful players offensively. You're talking about Michael Jordan from circa 1986 or 1987 through 1993, Shaquille O'Neal from 1999 to about 2003, Stephen Curry from about 2015 to about 2019, you know, as of last year or so. I love Damian Lillard. You gotta give some of those guys yes. credit too, like Damian. him. Dame is a great player, but there are levels to this. And that's why I was so happy to see Dame finally get the opportunity to go up against Stephen Curry without KD because McCullum and Lillard have been trying to make this excuse that the reason why the Warriors are so unbeatable is because they've had KD. Dame had his opportunity last season in the Western Conference Finals against Stephen Curry and not only did he get outplayed, he got thoroughly outplayed. If Stephen Curry had ever went one-on-one -on -one against another top point guard and got outplayed like Dame Lillard got outplayed, he would never hear the end of it. And Dame got scraped and very few people have said anything about it since then. After Steph Curry, then you got the Westbrooks and the Damian Lillards, all those type of point guards. I thought Damian Lillard, Lillard, I thought just last season, not overall better, but just last season, because of what he had to work with, I thought Damian Lillard deserved to be first team over Steph. Yeah. Well, that's why you need to be drug tested. Listen, Damian Lillard is the truth, and he showed that in the playoffs. And, and it's cheap. Oh, no, he's not the truth. Like the black woman says, he's a truth. <laughs> he's his truth. He's not the truth. And to be honest with you, 
Dame Lillard subconsciously knows that Stephen Curry is better than him. When they played in the playoffs last year, he was more concerned about his wardrobe than how they were playing out there on the court, coming to games with the Oakland A's jersey on and all this other shit. When I see guys start doing that, that tells me that subconsciously they're already tapping out. And the brother seems to be moving towards this hip-hop world more and more. So even though he gets on TV and says, oh, yeah, I'm all in on Portland and I don't want to be traded and blah, 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 he knows where his bread is buttered. He can make 250 mil in Portland, be a hometown hero. He's good with that. I'm not saying that Dame does not want to win a championship, but he realizes that it's probably not going to happen. He won't admit it, but he knows it. Love him too. I think that's important for your yeah. point guard. Pass or shoot, Zion Williamson will be an all star this year. Uh, I need to see how Zion looks the first month of the season before I make an assertion like that. He has to improve his game. He's going to have to make players actually be concerned about his ability to make a jump shot. I'm going to keep this one. I don't think he's going to be an all star this season. Me neither. I think he's going to go through a learning curve because now he's going to run up to guys just as big as him, just as athletic as him. And I won't say just as athletic as him, but bigger than him and better athletes than he encountered in college. Afraid of him, but. I think he's going to have a fantastic season, and the Pelicans will be one of the most entertaining teams in all. Wow. Yeah, that dude, Zion Williams, he jumped straight to the moon. Basketball. Because now you put all Drew Holiday. Give me them damn cookies. Lonzo Ball, Brandon Ingram. I mean, those guys are going to be running and gunning, and they got a good coach. You sure that's not a motion there because you draft the Lonzo Ball? You drafted Lonzo Ball Magic Johnson. Yes, I did. Oh, shit, Stephen A. Smith is going to make Magic <laughs> hit him with a chest pass right in his forehead. I'm standing right here, too. <laughs> oh, boy. Magic hit him in the head with the basketball. He said, I'll get dropped. Absolutely. Drew Holiday, by far the most underrated player in the NBA. And his peers know that as well. But I take his stat line. The boy was giving me 14, 7, and 5. As a 20 year old. Yes. He's only going to get better. And I think you're going to see that team running and gunning. They're going to be very good. And I love when you think about this big man on the wing, right? And the things that he did at Duke. Now he can bring those things to the NBA. Watch out. That fast break that they're going to be running and Yeah, they're going to be a problem for some teams. I'm not quite sure if they're going to make a push for the playoffs because, once again, last year you had to win 48 games to make the playoffs in the West. That's why I state there's going to be a team that doesn't make the playoffs that's going to shock people. People are going to say, I can't believe they're not going to make the playoffs. I'm not going to say that it's going to be the Lakers, but if it happens to be them, it would not ultimately shock me. Please keep in mind that Anthony Davis has missed the playoffs repeatedly throughout his career. And LeBron James fell 13 games short of the playoffs last season. As of right now, I'm going to pick them to win about 50 games. But if the Lakers were to miss the playoffs, it would not shock me at all. There's going to be a lot of teams out there in the Western Conference that are going to take a game or two away from the Lakers that people are not going to expect. Dallas Mavericks, it would not surprise me if the Phoenix Suns won a game, maybe even two games. Wouldn't shock me at all. The New Orleans Pelicans are going to win at least one game against the Lakers, and that's not even counting many of the other better teams in the Western Conference. Golden State Warriors, Denver Nuggets, Rockets, Clippers, etc. Those teams are going to at least win a game or two against the Lakers, and then they have to go out on those East Coast road trips. So we're going to find out a lot about the Lakers this year. And once again, there's going to be at least one team in the Western Conference that's going to shock people when they don't make the playoffs. And New Orleans is going to be amazing. Zion's going to be an all-star because you said that he's, he's going to run across this season. He's going to be an all-star. I'll tell you why. You said he's going to run across guys just as big, just as athletic. 
but there's never been anyone that big and that athletic. Are you saying this season he's going to be an all-star? I'll tell you why. He'll do enough, no. and the fans will vote him in. No, no. Will no. he? The fans aren't going to vote Zion okay, Williamson no, 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 no. in? All right, but if that's what you're doing, we're talking, he's be we're playing, talking, the we're talking legitimately earning an no, all-star. No, no, no. He Zion will play Williamson an all-star level, not. but he will... I'm not quite sure if the fans are going to vote Zion in and what that would mean. That would entail that he arguably could be a starter. I don't think that the NBA would allow that to happen if he was just averaging 17 and 7 or 16 and 8, something like that. I don't see that. Because the fans tried to make that happen last year with Luka Doncic, and the NBA kind of shut that down. The not in the West. Not in not the West. The West, West got to win. If he was in the East, yes, but not in okay, the West. Okay, last no, one I here, agree. guys. No way. Last one here. Pass or shoot. Who's going to finish with a better record? Rockets or Warriors? Wow. The Rockets will have a better regular season record than the Warriors. I'm going I'm to I'm give this one up to Stephen A. That's easy. That's easy. Yeah. It's definitely going to be the Rockets, number one, because they excel in the regular season more so than the postseason. With Agreed. Tony. And number two, because Kevin Durant is no longer in Golden State and Klay Thompson is gone for most of the season. I would not list the absence of Kevin Durant as a reason why the Rockets would win more games than the Warriors because I actually thought the presence of Kevin Durant made them more lax during the regular season and it probably decreased their regular season win total by about 8 to 10 games per season. He's half the season. I'll give Houston a better regular season record. That does not mean they will have better success in the postseason. Agreed. Clay, I mean, listen, that was devastating when Clay went out. You're down to Steph, D'Angelo Russell, and Draymond Green for most of the season. That'll be good enough to get to the playoffs. People Presumably. Underrated, by the way, Draymond's value. But once you're in the playoffs, if Clay comes back and get a rhythm, maybe I like him over Houston. The regular season, it's definitely. easy. It's definitely, definitely the Rockets. The Rockets will have a better record than the regular season, but I'm going to tell you a story right quick. Yeah. Kareem, re <clears throat> Kareem retires. And everybody said, no way the Lakers are going to be good anymore. That same year, 1991, with Vladi Dibas as our center, we go all the way to the NBA championship. Well, I have to stop you there, Magic Johnson. And I hate to have to correct you on your own career, but that's not accurate. Kareem retired in 1989, the same year that you guys lost to the Pistons in the finals. The next year, you guys made the playoffs, and I believe that you won 60-plus games. I'm trying to remember who you lost to in the playoffs in the first or second round. Maybe it was the second round. But I believe they lost to the Phoenix Suns in 1990 in their first season without Kareem. The next year is when they got to the finals and lost to the Bulls with Vlade Divac, of course, still at center. So I have to correct Magic there. My child for Golden State. Why? Because they know how to win. No Golden State is going to be a very dangerous dark horse in the Western Conference. Very interesting to watch. I just think that they're going to miss, they're going to miss not having Iguodala and Livingston there. They have a Stephen Curry who's going to be entering the last part of his prime next season. But anyway, that's basically it on that. We'll see how things go this season. So peace.